Welcome back, Lifesavers, to another NCLEX preparation video. My name is Nurse Kelly Tyrell, and in today's video, we are going to dissect some cardiovascular themed NCLEX style questions. So hopefully this will just be a reinforcement to the content you have been learning throughout the last two weeks with my other videos. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into some questions. Okay, question one, let's start off with those dreadful SATA type questions that everyone hates. So the question reads, an adult client is admitted to an acute care floor with the diagnosis of heart failure. Upon further workup, the healthcare provider informs the nurse that the client has right-sided heart failure. Which symptom or symptoms does the nurse expect to assess in this client? And we want to select all that apply. The answers are dependent edema, jugular vein distension, weight loss, crackles, and weight gain. So for this question, we have to first reread the question and pick out the key words. An adult admitted to an acute care floor with the diagnosis of heart failure. So bingo, there's your first key word. So now we wanna start thinking about the disease etiology of heart failure. All right, let's keep going. So upon further workup, the healthcare provider informs the nurse that the client has right-sided heart failure. Ding, ding, ding. Right-sided heart failure is your second keyword because there is a difference in clinical presentation between left-sided heart failure and right-sided heart failure. Okay, we'll keep going. So which signs and symptoms does the nurse expect to assess in this client? So we're looking to assess findings of right-sided heart failure, and we want to select all that apply. All right, so as we read through these answers, there's one answer that we can eliminate right off the bat because it's not a sign of right-sided heart failure or a sign of left-sided heart failure. So the answer we can eliminate first off is the weight loss because remember the heart's primary role is to pump blood, which is made primarily of fluid throughout the body. So if the heart is failing, it can adequately pump that blood and fluid through the body. So you start retaining water, which actually causes weight gain. So so we know we can eliminate that answer. All right, so now that we've eliminated the obvious wrong answers, we have to think about the difference between left and right-sided heart failure. So left-sided heart failure results from left ventricular dysfunction. So this prevents normal forward blood flow and causes blood to actually back up into the left atrium and pulmonary veins, whereas right-sided heart failure causes a backup of blood into the right atrium and impairs that venous circulation. So now let's look at each answer, dependent edema. So this means gravity-related swelling, which would be a sign of poor venous circulation. So yes, this answer is correct. The next answer, jugular vein distension. So this results from increased pressure in the superior vena cava. So where does the superior vena cava enter? Well, it enters into the right atrium on the right side of the heart. So if the right side of the heart is failing, it would make sense that you would see bulging of the jugular vein. So this answer is actually also correct. Crackles. Now crackles are adventitious lung sounds resulting from fluid buildup in the lungs. So we said that left-sided heart failure prevents normal forward blood flow causing a backup of blood into the left atrium and left pulmonary veins. So if the pulmonary veins are overloaded with fluid, then you would expect to hear that crackling sound in the lungs. So we can conclude that this is actually a sign of left-sided heart failure. Therefore, it is not the correct answer for this question. And last but not least, weight gain. We had already said weight gain is a sign of both left and right-sided heart failure due to the retention of the fluid. So yes, this answer is correct. So we have one, two, and five as our correct answers for this question. All right, let's take a look at another SATA question. The question reads, the nurse is caring for a client who is symptomatic for coronary artery disease. Which symptom or symptoms does the nurse expect to find when assessing this client? And we are going to select all that apply. So the options are chest pain, arm pain, jaw pain, renal failure, and liver failure. So this is actually a great question because we had just reviewed this information in my last common disease video about coronary artery disease. So if you haven't checked out that video, I'll make sure to link it somewhere above. 
So first we want to start thinking about the disease etiology of coronary artery disease. So if you remember from my common disease video, we said that coronary artery disease is a result of plaque buildup and narrowing of that coronary arteries, which impedes that rich oxygenated blood supply to the heart. So we wanna be thinking about what symptoms would a patient experience if they lacked blood supply to the heart. So the correct answers here are one, two, and three. Chest pain, arm pain, and jaw pain. When there is a lack of oxygenated blood to the heart, the nerves that branch from the heart and those coming from the arm and jaw actually send signals to the exact same brain cells. So this is why patients will experience pain that radiates from the chest to the arm and to the jaw. So these are key signs and symptoms of coronary artery disease and can occur after exertion or emotional stress or exposure to cold, but they can also develop when the client is actually at rest and not doing anything. Renal and liver failure are not expected symptoms with coronary artery disease, so we are going to eliminate those as the correct answers. All right, the next question reads, a client calls the nurse and states, I think I'm having bad indigestion because my chest hurts. Which response by the nurse is most appropriate? Option one, immediately go to the hospital. Option two, have you ever felt this way before? Option three, what did you eat yesterday? And option four, take an antacid to see if it subsides. Okay, so for this question, let's go through and pick out some keywords here. So we have a patient reporting bad indigestion. Keyword and chest pain, another keyword. And the question is asking which response is most appropriate. So most appropriate is another keyword because while all of the responses may be appropriate responses, we want to know which response is the most appropriate. So anytime you have a patient complaining of chest pain or feeling of indigestion, you should automatically start thinking that there may be a cardiac source to the pain. So in this case, the correct answer is going to be option one. You want to instruct the patient to go immediately to the hospital. The most common symptom of a myocardial infarction or heart attack is chest pain, which is a result of that deprivation of oxygen-rich blood to the heart. So the nurse would want to immediately inform the client to seek immediate attention because if the client is in fact having a heart attack, every second that medical attention is delayed, the heart muscle becomes more and more ischemic, meaning that the heart muscle essentially is dying. So all of the other responses are inappropriate because postponing care could lead to serious complications, including death. And I've, I've actually seen many patients come into my ER complaining of acid reflux type feeling in their chest. And once I did an EKG, I could see that they were having what we call a STEMI, um, which is essentially an ST elevated myocardial infarction. So this acid reflux or indigestion feeling I have found is more prevalent in women, but it actually does happen in men too. So the next question is another select all that apply. So the question reads, a client which has a family history of heart disease is diagnosed with coronary artery disease. The client asks the nurse, how might this affect my future health status? Which response or responses by the nurse is appropriate? And we are going to select all that apply. So the options are, it can lead to hypertension, Option two, it can lead to angina. Option three, it can lead to a myocardial infarction. Option four, it can lead to gastritis. And option five, it can lead to heart failure. So again, for this question, we want to think about the disease etiology of coronary artery disease and the symptoms or comorbidities the client can experience from it. So coronary artery disease causes decreased perfusion of myocardial tissue and inadequate myocardial oxygen supply. So knowing the etiology of this disease, we can conclude that CAD can lead to hypertension because as plaque builds up and the arteries narrow, the heart will have to work harder and harder to pump blood. So the pressure starts building up during the systole and diastole process, therefore increasing that blood pressure. Patients can also experience angina or chest pain for the same reason. So we know that patients are also at a very high risk for having a myocardial infarction or heart attack, which happens when the coronary artery becomes completely occluded or blocked. 
We also know that patients are at risk for heart failure because the heart is a muscle. So the more overworked that the heart is, the more of a chance it becomes of getting tuckered out and starts to fail. So the only answer in this question that doesn't make sense is that CAD can lead to gastritis. Gastritis is actually an inflammation of the stomach lining and its causes can include infection, injury to the stomach, regular use of NSAIDs, uh, which is an anti-inflammatory pain medication, or excessive alcohol consumption. So this answer doesn't correlate with the etiology of CAD. So the correct answers here are one, two, three, and five. Hypertension, angina, MI, and heart failure. So lastly, let's dissect a prioritization question. So the question reads, which nursing action is priority when caring for a client exhibiting manifestations of coronary artery disease? The options are decrease anxiety level, enhance myocardial oxygenation, administer sublingual nitroglycerin, educate the client about symptoms. So for these prioritization questions, it's important to remember that usually all of the answers will be appropriate nursing interventions. So really what you're trying to figure out is which intervention is the most important to act on right away. For these questions, you're gonna to wanna to think about the ABCs and Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So in my NCLEX and CHILL course, I do review these concepts in great detail. So make sure you check out my course for more test-taking strategies. But the abbreviated version of ABCs is airway, breathing, and circulation. So you'll always want to prioritize your nursing interventions in this order when you're caring for a client. So first you wanna assess for airway patency. In this question, none of the answers indicate that there's an actual problem with the patient's airway. So we're gonna move on to B for breathing or oxygenation. The two terms could actually be used interchangeably. So when you're looking at this list of interventions, option two is to enhance myocardial oxygenation, which when we're following the ABC algorithm, option two is gonna be the best answer for this question. Enhancing myocardial oxygenation is always the priority when a client exhibits manifestations of cardiac compromise. Because without adequate oxygenation, the myocardium suffers damage, and that we don't want that, that's irreversible damage. Sublingual nitroglycerin actually dilates the coronary vessels to increase circulation, but it's not the priority because circulation comes after breathing and oxygenation when you're following that ABC algorithm. So, and lastly, although educating the client and decreasing anxiety are really important, neither are a priority for an actively compromised patient. And that concludes the end of this lesson. I hope that you found this information extremely valuable and it made you just a little more confident as you prepare to take your NCLEX. I just wanna thank you so much again, Lifesavers, for tuning in today. My name is Nurse Kelly Tyrell and I help nurses feel more confident, increase their test scores, and retain what they don't remember in nursing school. If this video helped you in any way, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming content and future videos and why don't you go ahead and do me a favor and drop me a comment below just let me know where you're at with your nursing journey I'd love to say hi and just connect with you also make sure you click that share icon to spread the word and encourage a fellow aspiring nurse and last but not least when you are ready to take your NCLEX be sure to check out my NCLEX and show review where I help eliminate test anxiety and review detailed test taking strategies so you can have that unfair advantage to pass your exam on your very next attempt. Not ready to end the study sesh yet? Well you are in luck because if you stick around you can watch more of my videos coming at you in three, two, one. Bye Lifesavers.